Folks, it is Steve, the drummer at YouTube.com, where we're bringing yesterday's music into tomorrow. I want to bring part four of uh, F Note versus Roland uh, at you today. And today I'm going to talk a little bit just about the toms, and I'm just going to very briefly touch on the bass drum. But but the uh, primary function today is going to be to talk to you about the uh, about the a comparison, an A B comparison of the toms uh, from the uh, Roland kit, from the Roland TD50 KB2, and the uh, and the uh, and the F note drums. So here we go. Let's get into it. We're going to start off with some, uh, the playing example. I'm, I'm going to start off with the F note drums today, and uh, play uh, the toms for you, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about it. Saying, uh, I'm saying a couple of things here. Number one, um, as far as recording quality on this and all the videos, I'm just using a straight eye rig, not adding anything to it. And so uh, the recording quality is uh, is probably somewhere in the ballpark of a maybe, maybe a four on a ten scale. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's just it's just kind of okay. And that's true of of, of all of my um, of all of my recordings, uh, all my drum covers, all my uh, uh, product reviews and everything they've all been recorded the same way and then uh, and then secondly as I've mentioned before in, in my previous videos this is no hot licks here obviously I'm not the drum tech guy I'm just here bashing on the uh, on the pads and just trying to give you kind of an honest straight up uh, feel of, of how the, the the trigger response is and, and, and just a basic idea of how this stuff kind of sounds so with all that out of the way um, I guess when I think about the good of the of the F note, what 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 does F note really bring to the table? Well, I think they they have really really good samples, and I'm looking back at my notes here. I think the kit that I used for all these examples with the F note drum kit was a kit called Vintage Power, which I think was trying to mimic like a 1970s late 70s um, uh, classic rock hard rock kind of kind of drum sound. And I think that it was it, it was it was a good kit. It was kind of a go-to for me. I used it on a lot of covers, and uh, and the and in particular, I think the tom samples and the cymbal samples and uh, and probably the kick drum samples were were really good. And uh, and I think that becomes especially evident as I transition here to my roll and playing example here in a second. Um, I, I've got I've really got to give kudos to F Note in terms of their samples. The bad things that I'm going to say, and I've said this before in other videos, is um, on the uh, on the F note pad, uh, on, on, actually on the F note shell. To their credit, uh, both with the snare drum and uh, and with the toms, they use a lot of sensors. And the snare drum uses four. The, the at least for the 14 inch snare drum, it had four um, sensors and then four rim sensors and then a rim click sensor. That's a total of nine sensors in the snare drum. The toms had three sensors. Um, and so it's, it was three sensors in, actually in the um, in the in, in, up against the head, and then three more on the rims. Each of the toms technically had six sensors. With all that, you got very good, reliable triggering. However, when you hit the rim on the F note drums, and I tended to hit the drum, the hit hit the rim a bunch, and I've watched a lot of really really good guys play the F note drums, and I've seen similar things from them. I want to say there's a promotional video with like uh, Steve Ferrone and um, um, uh, I forget the guy's name from Earth, Wind and & Fire and, um, and they're back and forth on F note drums and those guys which are clearly excellent professional drummers are in certain cases hitting the rim and when you hit the you know kind of like a rim shot on a snare drum is you know kind of really 
amplifies the sound and, get, and brings a lot of power. And, and I think that most manufacturers do a really good job of doing that, with, of, of, of bringing out that characteristic with their snare drum. They're not doing it with their toms, especially, especially with, the, uh, with the F note drums. When you hit the, the rim, it just really sounded clanky and not good. The other thing too, and I don't know if this is evident, if anybody's ever noticed this, my the whole goal with hybriding together an F note 5 and an F note 7 was to have four toms, was to have two rack toms and two floor toms. For the life of me, I could never get all four toms to show up in the module. Whenever, and, and I tried different, I had two modules, I had a five and I had a seven, I had multiple cable snakes, I had the cable snakes to go with both sets, I had a ton of cables, and I traded around every combination of module, cable snake, um, cable, pad, configuration, everything I could do, and I could never get all four of the F note, um, um, pads to to uh, to trigger and so I, I in essence I couldn't get this this drum set to do what it was that I wanted it to do good side F note has great sounding samples um, bad side uh, the the rims were just not very musical and, and I could not actually get the kit to do what it was that I was seeking it to do of a genius to figure out that tom grooves are really not my specialty but anyhow i think uh, i think it gets the point across um kind of a b comparison here of, of uh the Roland toms versus the uh versus the f note toms so um i think a couple of things are clear to me um and, and they're probably relatively clear to everyone else um the the Roland uh tom samples are probably um they're 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 just not as good as the ethno samples there, there's just no two ways about it when you play uh um i think it's especially i, th I think that ethno has has high quality samples and it is especially evident with their toms and with their um and with their cymbals i think that roland uh has a good uh and, and, and I think F notes uh, bass drums to some degree sound, sound better too. I think where, where Roland really shines is, uh, is with their snare drum, honestly, in terms, in terms of their samples are concerned. And I think that, that uh, well, I don't know, you can make all kinds of arguments all over the board. Uh, a thing that's, that's evident to me uh, with that playing example is, is how easily the, uh, the uh, Roland Tom's uh, machine gun. Kind of talking a little bit about the, uh, the trigger structure here. I think Roland's um, um, philosophy as an, as an electronic drum manufacturer is always to have very reliable triggering and very low latency. I think those, and, and to have um, sounds that can be molded. I think, I think those are probably the three core philosophies or core tenets of the company. And honestly, I think they do those things really well. Now I'm playing the, uh, the shell, the, I'm sorry, the pads here in the TD50 KV2. So I've got two 10 inch uh, pads up top and two 12 inch pads uh, uh, down low. Um, I think that uh, uh, Roland in the VAD line, in the 506 and in the 706 or whatever the numbers they're using today as they kind of uh, make some uh, adjustments to their, to their product line. In their shells, they're using multiple triggers much like uh, both ATV and F note we're doing as far as the three triggers in a tom and then the three rim triggers in the pads There's just one trigger. There's one one trigger cone and one rim sensor um, Now for that that being said they trigger very reliable. They're very responsive for some reason I have less of a problem with the um, with the uh, 
with the rim, uh, the musicality of the rims in in the uh, in the Roland product than I do in the uh, in the Ethno product. And then a big thing is is a lot of times a lot of kits and, and there's a there's a, a YouTuber uh, Drum Dog sixty nine a guy named Michael Fournier and he does a lot of great eighties stuff a lot and 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 pro he's probably one of my favorite YouTube uh, drum cover. Uh, people and he a lot of times he puts percussion on the rims of his pads He puts a tambourine or a hand clap or or different things and so a lot of the songs that he plays uh, In his covers he plays the drum part obviously, but then he also plays the the percussion melody on the rims of the uh, uh, Of his of his e-drums and that's something that I've all that's something that I've always really admired and respected and I to some degree on a much lower level try to incorporate into my play the role and stuff really seems to, to, to handle that stuff well. second out and kind of sum all this up with my conclusions. Number one, this has been a four-part series and each video has been in the ballpark of 10, 12, uh, going on 15 minutes. And so this is a grand total of almost an hour's worth of content. And if you've watched any any portion of that, I generally appreciate you uh, you you taking your time out to, to watch, watch the content. And my aim here, having, having had both drum sets and played both drum sets, is to try to give some direct comparison for those of you that may be on the fence about which drum set to, to buy and so or which manufacturer to buy to buy gear from. And so I'm not trying to bash on anybody. I'm not trying to uh, I'm not trying to I don't know. I'm not trying to to create a negative slant here in any direction for for either company because I think both companies produce good quality products on some level or another. So my conclusions are this: number one, I think that F Note. Um, has uh, has a really good product line. I think they have really good samples. I think they have uh, they have really good sounding drums. Roland, I think, is the company that's been around forever that builds uh, gear that that just tends to last. And so, you know, kind of getting to, into the I don't want to cut on anybody. The F Note gear, um, they have put a lot of money into. I, I feel as though they put a lot of money into the technology. Of the technology side of the product that they are selling, um, the using a touchscreen module and, and developing the new Pro line and uh, developing you know a full uh, line of, of shell kits and all this stuff. I think that they are using the light sensor in the hi hats versus the mechanical uh, piston going up and down. I think they're on the cutting edge, in, so to speak, of a lot of technology going into electronic drums. However, and this is a big, big, big however, the drums themselves are not, uh, are, are, are not necessarily of the, of the highest quality. Justin uh, Greenwald, 65 Drums, just did a, 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 a video uh, in the last week or so, and of course it really depends on when you watch this video or when I publish this video, when you watch this video, because things live on the internet forever. I say all that to say, one of his points was, um, you know, sitting behind the new F Note Pro drum set and, and looking at the seam on the tom, uh, you know, it's a wrap finish, it's a white sparkle wrap finish, and there's a seam. And the, he said, his, his best as I can quote him is, I feel like if I sat down behind a high end Gretsch drum set or DW drum set or other acoustic manufacturer, I wouldn't see things like that. The drums would be better put together. And I, having been an F Note user for a period of time, I wholeheartedly agree that 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 it was was extremely well said. Where the rubber met the road for me, I mean, I can kind of deal with a with a seam here or something like that. But you hit this snare drum at least two times every measure, and, and probably relatively hard. 
And that snare drum really took a beating and I felt like I was playing a very cheaply made snare drum that had very inexpensive rims and very expensive components that did not hold up to the rigors of being played like, um, like, like a snare drum gets played. The Roland snare drum, this thing is built like a tank. I think I could run over it with my car and my car would, would sustain more damage than the snare drum. The Roland gear, um, it, it just, it holds up, it works. Now, the samples, the machine gunning, um, you know, Roland has, uh, has, has chosen a course. They want to choose sounds that are easily, um, um, uh, for lack of a better word, manipulated in your drum module. And I'll say this, I like my drum covers with Roland drums better than I like my drum covers with F note drums. The F note samples sound great. But for some reason, I can't get them to mix with music the way I can get the Roland sounds to, to mix with music. Now, in all fairness, too, I don't have a digital audio workstation. I don't, I'm not using plugins. I don't have a full bank of reverbs and, and compressors, and, and I don't have a full on studio. I'm just sitting here. I'm basically a guy sitting in a bedroom, um, you know, what used to be a bedroom anyway playing my drums and jamming out, uh, you know, when I, when I learned to play the drums way back in 1985, I used to come home from school and go to my bedroom and I had a drum set set up in there and I'd put on my Motley Crue records and I'd put on my ACD records and I'd put on my headphones and I would bash away on my drums and that's how, that's basically how I, I learned to play the drums. And literally 40 years later, I'm still sitting in the bedroom, um, <laughs> circumstances are a little bit different, but I'm essentially doing the same thing. I'm using Apple iTunes and I'm using a rolling, you know, module and all, but I'm sitting here playing along to records. And uh, it's something I did 40 years ago as a kid, it's something I do today. But for some reason, the Roland samples played by themselves don't sound good, but when you put them in the context of music, they sound better. These are my conclusions. I'm sure that there are a million people out there that have far different conclusions than mine. I look forward to hearing your opinion. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for stopping.